Hello! This is what we're going to be making today. I'll take you through the process step by step, showing you every single keystroke I do and everything that I do. Also, to make things a little more fun, I've included three different can designs so you can pick which one you want, or I show you how you can make your own. You also could really, you know, own this project and you know, change the text, change the can design, and I'd love to see what you come up with. All of the project files are completely for free on my website, learn-blender3d.com. Also, I'm curious, what do you all call this? I grew up in the United States in the Midwest, and I always called it pop. It's strange for me to hear soda, and then soda pop, and I think there's even some other stuff. So I'm curious, both in the country and abroad, what do you actually call this? Okay, I have Blender 2.9 open. I'm just gonna left click away from the splash screen. I'm gonna left click on the camera and then shift left click on the light. Hit X for delete and hit enter to actually delete those things. One thing I like to do when I'm modeling sometimes is I I make a little cage to, to make it really clear where my measurements are gonna be. So let me just show you what I mean. So I'm gonna hit numpad one to my front view if you don't have a numpad, follow these directions, and then you can just use your one key. I'm gonna tab into edit mode, and I'm gonna hit G and Z to move just on the Z axis. And if you hold control, you can snap and then left click, and you'll be locked in on that bottom line perfectly. And I'm gonna tab out of edit mode. And I did that so that the origins at the bottom, so that when we change uh, the height, it'll start at the very bottom here and go upwards rather than um, straddling this X axis. So this is just our guide. So one thing I like to do, I'm going to go, if you click on this little box here and go to visibility, actually no, viewport display and scroll down, I'm going to change this display as from texture to bounds. And that just means in the viewport, it's always just going to be um, just a little bounds here. And this is just for reference. So this works for us. So I'm going to hit N to bring up my right panel. And so I measured this can out it's going to be 2.5 in for inches, tab, 2.5 in, tab, and then 4.75 in, and hit enter. And those are actually the dimensions of the can. And then so we could just zoom in by scrolling in, and this is actually the shape of our can. Okay, so I'm gonna hold shift, hit A, hover over mesh and click on circle. You can see it's really big right now. So with my mouse over here, I'm gonna hit S for scale. I'm just gonna bring this down, maybe left click, hit S for scale again, bring it in until it lines up about here and then left click. I'm gonna hit my numpad seven to go into my top view. So we're gonna work at the very bottom of the can and the very bottom of the can is actually smaller than uh, the rest of the can. So we're gonna have to make this a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna hit S for scale again. I'm gonna get it to about where um, the bottom of the can is, maybe something like that. And then if I tab into edit mode, right now these vertices aren't actually connected. So I'm gonna hit F to actually connect those. And then let me hit numpad one to go back to my front view. And you can also kind of take a moment to see um, if you think this is a good spot, maybe S for scale, maybe even a little bit smaller. Um, having a real can to reference helps, but something like this will be pretty good. All right, and I just wanna center this a little bit more. So I'm gonna hold shift and click in my middle mouse just to pan around. And then I'm gonna use my middle mouse to zoom in a little bit. So we've got all these selected still. So now I can hit E for extrude. And I'm just gonna bring this up a little bit. Maybe something like, here's pretty good. Let me see, maybe something like that's pretty good. Um, so then the can kind of extends outward. So I'm gonna hit E and then S. So E for extrude and S to immediately scale it out. And now I am gonna bring it out until it matches the edge of our line here. And then I'm gonna hit G for move, Z to do it on the Z axis. And I'm just gonna pull this up to maybe about here. Let's see, something like that. And I'm gonna zoom in, scrolling in with my middle mouse and then shift middle mouse click, move over. 
I want to smooth this out a little bit, so I'm going to hold Control, hit R, left click, and then left click again, and that's just going to add this loop cut, and then the left click was to place it there. If I hit S for scale, I'm just going to bring this out just to kind of smooth out the transition from one area to another. Let me see how I feel about that. This part may be a little bit too big, but let's just keep going. We can always adjust that later if we think it's not good enough. So if I'm going to hit Z and then click on wireframe, left click and drag, get all of these vertices. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit, middle mouse, wheel out, shift, middle mouse, click to pan. Now I'm just going to hit E for extrude and then bring it up pretty high, maybe to about here, left click. And so now the can's gonna go back in again. So I'm gonna hit E for extrude, bring it up to, let's see, maybe about actually here. I'm gonna hit S for scale and bring it in to about, it actually should be pretty similar to the bottom size that we had. So maybe something like that. And then I'm gonna left uh, hold control, hit R, hover my mouse over here and then left click. And I'm gonna bring it up a little bit maybe to here. Left click again, I'm gonna hit S for scale. I think the can kind of actually comes in a little bit here. So I'm gonna pull it to there and then left click. And then I'm gonna hold control hit R, hover here to add another loop cut. I'm gonna left click and then left click again. I'm gonna hit S, bring it out a little bit just to smooth out this curve into the top of the can here. I think that's pretty good. And also be sure to go ahead and save. I'm a big supporter of saving early and often, so I'm gonna do the same. Okay, so now we need to do this top lip. So I'm just gonna left click and drag to get these top vertices. And I'm gonna zoom in pretty close here. So middle mouse and then shift middle mouse click. And let's see, so I want to E for extrude and S for scale and bring this in just a little bit. The lip isn't too thick. And I'm just gonna put it there. And let me just middle mouse around to see what I'm doing a little bit. I'm gonna hit Z and then go to solid view. So we've got this face here and we wanna go down. Let's see. So this actually is a time, there's a new feature in Blender 2.9. If you click and hold this extrude region and go to extrude manifold, manifold. This it, we're gonna do this extrude because we're going through already existing geometry. And if you do the normal extrude, it will kind of screw things up. So now we can just left click and drag this uh, little thing here, this little yellow. And we just need to get to the correct height, which they don't go down too far. Maybe something like that will be pretty good. And let me just tab out of edit mode for a second. And let's just take a look at what we've got. Let's zoom out. Okay, so yeah, that is looking pretty good. Let me just save. So now that I'm looking at it, I am missing the little lip that's at the top here. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode. Let me just click on this select box just so I I'm, I'm, don't forget that I have that other tool selected before. Middle mouse in, shift, middle mouse click. I'm gonna come up. And so we're gonna add a loop cut. So I'm gonna hold control, hit R. And so I'm hovering, hovering over here, I'm gonna left click, I'm gonna bring it up. And I think I might exaggerate, you know, the lip isn't huge, but I might exaggerate a little bit and I might bring it to something like here and then left click. And what we wanna do now is I'm gonna zoom in actually a little bit more even than shift middle mouse. I'm gonna switch to my face select. And if you hover your mouse kind of in between uh, the faces here and hold alt and then left click, you'll get this ring. If you hold alt and click more like here, you'll get this. So you kind of want to hold your mouse here, hold alt and then left click. And so we've got this selected and we want to extrude this out, but we're going to do another special extrude. So if you click and hold and uh, you click and hold there and then you want extrude along normals. And now, so each of these, if you don't know about normals, each of these faces are pointing a direction and we want to extrude along that. So that's what we're doing. I can left click and drag on this tool and I'm gonna pull it until I get to the distance I want. So these lips aren't huge, um, but I do, I think I am gonna exaggerate a little bit. So maybe something like that will be good. And then uh, let go once you're ready. And again, I just don't, don't wanna forget that I left this tool on. So I'm gonna switch back to my select box, tab out of edit mode. 
I'm just gonna zoom out and middle mouse around to take a quick look at this. So um, yeah, let's start adding some other stuff so we can see if we're happy with this or if we should make more adjustments. So I'm gonna right click on this and click on Shade Smooth. And then I'm also going to go to the modifiers, add modifier, subdivision surface, and I'm gonna turn it up to two. So that's just gonna smooth everything out. Um, but one of the issues is smooth things out kind of too well. So anywhere we want there to be um, kind of a crease, we have to go in and add that now. So, but also real quick, I knew the lip was gonna be a little different than I wanted. And if you go to the top, you see there's an issue up here. Uh, to fix this one, let's have an edit mode. I've got face select mode. If you just left click in the center here, you can't really see anything. But if you're under item, you can then take this mean crease and pull it all the way up to one. And if I zoom in here, shift middle mouse click, you can see there's some weirdness going on here. If I just hit I for inset and then bring my mouse in a little bit and then left click, it'll fix that for us. Let me tab out of edit mode. So we've got that fixed. And you know, this lip probably is fairly accurate. Let's add the crease first and see how we feel about it. So I'm gonna tab back into edit mode. If I middle mouse around, I'm kind of trying to get under so I can look up into it. And we can't quite see it, but I'm gonna hit Z and go to wireframe and switch to the edge select mode here. And so there's an edge. It's hard to kind of see which one we're selecting here. There's an edge underneath kind of where this lip is. Let me hit Z and solid to see if that's the right one. Yeah, so I'm gonna hit Z and go to wireframe again. So I know I want this, this is the correct edge loop. So I'm gonna hold Alt with my mouse here and then left click to get that whole edge loop. I'm gonna hit Z and solid. And we're just gonna again, drag this mean crease all the way up to one. So there's actually a crease there. And I'm gonna tab out of edit mode and then zoom out a little bit. And yeah, that's pretty accurate to a real can. I, I keep debating if I wanna exaggerate it a little bit. Um, a real can actually might be a little bit bigger. So let's actually just exaggerate this a little bit or possibly make it closer to uh, a real can. So we're gonna do this by tabbing in edit mode and we already have this loop uh, selected. So I'm gonna middle mouse in to get even closer, shift middle mouse click, pan around and it's hard to see, but there's another edge loop here. So I'm gonna hold alt and hold shift also. So alt and shift and then left click here. Oops, nope, I got the wrong one. So I'm gonna control Z to undo that. Maybe move it over a little bit, alt shift, left click. And I got this other ring. So now that I have both those selected, I can hit G for move and Z. And that's just gonna make it so I can make this a bit bigger. So I'm gonna hit escape just to see where we started. I don't wanna go too dramatic, so I'm gonna hit G and Z. Just bring it down maybe a little bit like that. Tab out of edit mode, zoom out. And yeah, that was pretty subtle, um, but I think that is a little bit closer to how it really should be. Let's maybe even check a little bit further. So I'm gonna tab in edit mode. Those are still selected. G, Z, just bring it down a bit. Tab out of edit mode. And yeah, I think that's looking good. So wherever you think looks good, but yeah, I think that's pretty accurate there. So yeah, now we want to still continue. So since we added the subdivision surface, it smoothed everything out. And also you can, if you want to see a preview of on and off, you can hover over here and then left click off and on. And so it just cleans everything up, but especially if you look at the bottom, it's changing things pretty dram dramatically down there, which we don't want. Um, so I've still got the can select, I'm gonna tab in edit mode. I also think there should be a little bit of an edge here. So I'm gonna hold Alt A to deselect everything, make sure those aren't selected. And I'm gonna hold Alt and left click here. And I'm just gonna drag this mean crease maybe all the way up to one tab out of edit mode. And yeah, I think you know there is a pretty visible lip here um, when you work with the can or when you look at a can. So let's move ourselves to the bottom of the can. I'm actually gonna even I'm gonna rotate around. And you know what, let's let's clean up. We didn't do the bottom exactly uh, accurate before. So let's tab into edit mode and I'm gonna click on the face select mode, left click here, get this whole face. I'm gonna hit I for inset and then drag my mouse over. And then we can use that extrude. If you click and hold here, extrude manifold. And I'm just gonna left click and drag this up see maybe something about there and we have that same issue that we had going on before uh, I'm just gonna click on my select box to have that there if I hit I 
to inset it. That's going to help things here. Let me tab out of edit mode. So that I think did help a little bit. Um, but I do think there's some spots where we want some more creases. Okay, so I'm going to tab into edit mode. I'm going to hold alt and hit A just to make sure I have everything deselected. And let me middle mouse around. So I think I'm going to hold alt, left click. Oops, we got the wrong one here. Hold alt A to deselect. And at first I'm going to actually go back to my edge select. And I'm going to left or hold alt, left click, make sure I get this loop. I'm going to drag this mean crease all the way up to 1. I'm going to tab up edit mode. Yeah, I think again, that's another spot where you kind of see a crease. Tab back into edit mode. And you can't see it. Um, the, the mesh is going through it. But if I hit Z wireframe, left click. Actually, it's kind of hard. I'm going to move my mouse around. Zoom in a bit. We want this edge. Oops, this edge. Yep. Okay, so there's an edge here. So if I hold Alt and left click, I've got that edge now. I'm going to hit Z and go to Solid. I'm just middle mouse around, make sure I have the right one selected. I'm going to drag this mean crease all the way up to 1. Tab out of edit mode, zoom out a bit, shift middle mouse. And yeah, I think now we've got the shape of the can pretty spot on here. I'm going to go ahead and save. Okay, and the one last thing on modeling the can I think I'm going to do, I'm going to hit numpad 1 in my front view. Uh, it's not exactly as tall as I had measured, so let's just hit S for scale, Z to do it just on the Z axis. I'm just going to bring it up to where it's touching and then left click. And let's just do a quick middle mouse around. Yeah, I think, you know, if you've got a can nearby, I think we're pretty accurate on uh, modeling this. So we are done modeling the can at this point. Okay, so now we need to UV unwrap this thing. If you aren't familiar with UV unwrapping, it's because we're going to make a can design, and the can design is a 2D image, and this can is actually a 3D object. So we kind of have to add cuts to where it could be flattened out so that our 2D image will fit onto it properly. So I've still got it selected, and this top tab, there's UV editing. Actually, no, we're going to not do that yet. Let's just tab into edit mode. So now it's just a matter of marking seams. And I'm going to, under the wrench, I'm just going to click this little icon to turn off the subdivision surface just so I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. And I'm going to zoom in, scroll in here, shift middle mouse, click, and then middle mouse to orbit around. And I'm just going to zoom in. And I want to get, I want to make a cut where this is here. So I've got my edge select mode. I'm going to hold alt, left click. I've got that ring selected. I'm just going to hit U and go to Mark Seam. So this is essentially just going to cut the top part off um, from the rest of our, uh, for our UV. Um, now I'm just going to shift middle mouse click to get to the bottom. And we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to middle mouse around. I think I want to mark the seam here. I'm looking at a can real quick. Yeah, it's fine to have it go down here. I'm going to hold Alt, hit A just to make sure I have the other one deselected. I'm going to Alt, left click, get this ring, and I'm going to hit U, mark seam, and I'm going to go ahead and save real quick. So we still need one more seam. If I zoom out here and shift middle mouse up, so this whole section, the top and bottom, have been cut off, but still we need one more seam to where this middle part could be flattened out. So I'm going to hit numpad 3 to get to my back view. And if I hold, let me hold Alt A to deselect everything. I'm going to hold Alt and left click right here. So this is getting the whole ring here. But we are going to go in and remove a few. So if I zoom in, shift middle mouse up. I don't need uh, these edges selected past the seam. So I'm going to deselect this one by holding shift and left clicking. And then I'm going to rotate around, middle mouse click, zoom in, left shift, left click to deselect that one, shift, left click to deselect that one, and let's rotate around, shift, left click, shift, left click. All right, so if I middle mouse around, I only have selected um, up to that seam. Oh, actually, I missed one. Let me shift, miss mount, middle mouse, hold alt, left, or hold, sorry, hold shift, left click, and now I only have the seam up to that, um, to where we already have a cut. 
So I'm gonna hold shift, middle mouse, go down. I'm just getting myself to the bottom of the can. Guess maybe I should zoom out, come back in. So again, we don't need uh, the edge selected past this cut. So I'm gonna shift, left click on this one, middle mouse around, shift, left click here. Let me just see, shift, left click, shift, left click. So yeah, so I only have this edge selected up into both seams. Let me zoom out and just double check that real quick. So seam to seam is selected. I'm gonna hit U and I'm gonna mark that final seam. So now from, so all the way around the can, this could be flattened out and that's where we're gonna put our design. So we're done with the UV editing now. I'm gonna go ahead and save. Okay, and before I forget, I'm gonna turn the subdivision surface back on and I'm gonna tab out of edit mode. And at the top here, let's click on the UV editing. And our can's really small here, so I'm gonna zoom in here. And so now since we've marked those seams, we're just gonna hit A to select all of these, and then U, click unwrap. And then on the left side, you can see, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit over here with my mouse over here. You can see we actually have our uh, can unwrap. So this whole section is the middle of the can, this, these are the top and the bottom. Okay, and then, so the top and bottom don't actually, they're not gonna have a design on it, they're just gonna be a color. So I really am gonna want this section to fill up the whole UV. And so I wanna rotate this around, but real quick to make sure I know what's the top and bottom. In the left, or in the right panel, I'm just gonna left click, and let me just click and drag and select some of these. Oh, that's the top. Let me just left click and drag and get these. So I know what's the top and the bottom. So it looks like, and then maybe I'll get these. So it looks like um, if I hit A to select everything, these are the top and these are the bottom. So with my mouse on the left side now, I'm gonna hit A to select all of these. Rotate, so I'm gonna hit R for rotate. I believe I'm gonna type in negative 90 and hit enter. And then just to make sure I did this right, I'm gonna left click and drag over here. And yeah, so since I can see the top ones over here and I see the bottom over here, I know I've got the correct one selected. I'm just gonna hit A to select everything so I can see it again. And now it's just a matter of, I'm gonna hit G, move this over a bit. So the can actually, it already does fill it up almost perfectly. I maybe I'm gonna hit S for scale just to bring it down a teeny bit, just to make sure it fits completely in our scene. And yeah, so this is good for our next step. Okay, so now we want to have this layout exported so we can take it into an image editing image editing program and actually add our design. So let's go up to UV and click on Export UV Layout. Jump to wherever you've got these project files. Go into the Assets folder, and I'm just going to name this Can UV. And if you've got your right panel open, if you don't, just actually, sorry, I. I mean, I clicked, I was still typing down here. Let me click into here, hit N. Just if you don't have your panel open, N will bring it open. And let's see, so since, so this is the size of the UV, I'm just gonna double this. So I'm gonna click in here, and if I click to the end there, I can do star two, hit enter to double it. I'm gonna click in here, star two, hit enter, just so I can double it. Um, that's just gonna increase the file size, not completely necessary. Um, but so we're in an assets folder, I've named it, we change the size, click export UV layout. It'll take a moment to actually do that. So now I've got Photoshop open where I've opened up this can UV uh, file. You could also open it up in any image editing program. GIMP is a free alternative, Crit is a free alternative, um, but I am just gonna use Photoshop here and so now it's really nice, we see where we need to put our design. So we need to have our design filling this area. And I also wanna have a gray area so these cans, uh, the top and bottom, have a spot to um, go to. So now it's just a matter of creating your design. You literally, anything you can create of or think of, you just uh, you know fill this out here. And just don't forget that you actually do need to hide this layer um, before you're completely done. Otherwise, these lines will show up on the can. So go ahead and make your can design, or you can just continue using the one I've created. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Okay, so I have my final design finished. 
So real quick, just to show you this UV. Um, so yeah, I use this to you know do the layout. Um, these are overlapping instead of red, but we're gonna fix that in uh, in Blender. So don't worry about that. I'm gonna turn that back off and just notice I actually saved this as a PSD because um, Blender can actually handle Photoshop files. So I'm all done here and I'm just gonna save and go back to Blender. Okay, so I'm back in Blender now. I am going to actually just tab out of edit mode. So I'm in object mode. I'm gonna click on the material properties tab and click new. And let's just go ahead and click in here and name this can. And let's see, so first thing we're gonna do is this base color. This, an earlier version of Blender, this might be on the right side, but starting at 2.9, it's here. So click there and click on image texture, click on open, go into your assets folder and double click on this design, or you could use your own design, but I'm gonna double click on this one. And we're not seeing anything yet, but with my mouse here, I'm gonna hit Z and go to material preview. And let me just middle mouse around and so you can see we do have our uh, Suzanne had our design on the can, but we have some issues up here and also doesn't look quite right. So in the materials, we want to take metallic all the way up to one and we'll take this roughness, not all the way down, maybe something like 0.17, something like that. You could, we can adjust this later too, but something like that. And if I tab into edit mode, and then put my mouse on the left side and so zoom out. You can see, so this one, this part's looking good. It's these two that are bad. So hold Alt, hit A to deselect. And since these are separate parts, you can hover your mouse over this one, hit L, that will select all of those. If I hover over my mouse over this one, hit L, I'll have those selected. So I'm just gonna hit S to scale it and then left click. And since there's no design, we don't need to care too much. It's just in the gray and that's all we need. So if I tab out of edit mode, move my mouse around, you can see, and I'm gonna zoom in, we've got it looking good. And let's just actually just go back to layout and hit Z, material preview. I'm just gonna orbit around, a middle mouse clicking to orbit around, zoom out. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with this design. I think it's looking pretty good. Okay, so one thing I'm gonna do real quick, we don't really need this guide anymore. So I'm gonna left click on this here because we don't really need it. I'm gonna hit X and enter to delete. And in the top right, I'm just gonna double click in here and name this can. Um, it's always good to keep your files organized and clean. And yeah, so now we're actually gonna move on to doing uh, the rest of the scene. So now we're gonna focus on the text. So I'm actually gonna hit G and X to move the can out of the way for now, I'm just moving it over. I'm gonna hit numpad one to go into my front view. I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit. And let's hold shift, hit A, hover over mesh, and actually, sorry, go to text and click on text. Uh, it looks really big right now, and it's not in the right position, so it's R for rotate 90. Oops, I'm gonna hit escape on that. R, X, and then 90, hit enter. And if I zoom out, you can see it's really huge. So let's hit S for scale and bring this down to closer to what it's gonna be like, something like that. Zoom in. And then let's click on the little A here. It lets us have the uh, letter properties. And I wanna change this alignment. So go to paragraph and change the horizontal alignment to center. And let's change the vertical to center also. So I know things are perfectly centered. And when I hit S for scale, I know I'm scaling right on that center. I'm actually gonna hit escape on that. So with this still selected, I can tab in the edit mode and then delete that out. And our first line says, what does it say? Drink, in all caps, I think, drink this, and then tab out of edit mode. And I'm also gonna use a custom font. So you could just you know go ahead and use this font, but I'm gonna click under this font tab and where there's this folder, I'm gonna click on that. And on Windows, you just navigate to wherever your fonts are. On Mac, I assume it's similar, um, but if you wanna use a custom font, just look into how you can use your own fonts in Blender. I'm gonna search, I know I want Futura, and I believe I used Bold, I'm gonna double click on that. And yeah, that's the look I'm looking for. Okay, and it's gonna need to be moved up. So I'm gonna hit G and Z. I want to be above the can a little bit, 
I think it's a little big still, so I'm gonna hit S for scale and bring this down maybe to something like this. And then let's go to the material tab, let's click new. I'm gonna click in here. I think this part is blue. I'm gonna name this blue. Go under the base color. Let's find a nice blue. Make it as bright as it can be. Maybe something like this. And we don't want this to be reflective or at all, so I'm gonna take the roughness all the way up to one. And then I'm gonna go back to the uh, text properties here and open up geometry. And I'm just gonna click this extrude. If I uh, middle mouse in and middle mouse click over, you can see when I added that extrude, it just gives it some dimension. And I want it to have just a little bit um, because I want it to poke out from the wall just a teeny little bit. Um, so I'm added it like that. I'm gonna hit numpad one to go back into my front view and zoom back out a bit. Okay, so we're ready for our next text. So I'm gonna hold shift, hit D, and then hit Z. So I duplicated it with shift D, then Z to move it on the Z axis. I'm gonna left click here. And this next line, I'm gonna tab into edit mode, delete this out. I believe it's still caps. I'm gonna do only electrolytes. Hopefully I spelled that right. And tab out of edit mode. So this line's way too long right now. I'm gonna hit S for scale bring it in, I think it's supposed to be something like so. And I actually used a different font for this one, so I'm gonna go back over here, click on the folder, I'm gonna type in Futura again, and let's see, I think I used book, so I'm gonna double click on book, and yeah, that's looking how I want it to look. Okay, so let's keep adding text, so I'm gonna hold shift, hit D to duplicate, Z to keep it on the Z axis, left click, and I'm gonna hit S for scale, bring this down maybe to about so. Let's zoom in here, tab into edit mode. And what did I do? I did negative five carbs. And I'm gonna space, I'm gonna do two spaces. And then under the backspace, if you hold shift and click, there's this little vertical bar. And I'm gonna hit space twice. And when I do negative 100 calories and tab out of edit mode, and so I know that's centered, that's good. And let's see, let's actually click back on this one, hold shift, hit D, hit Z, bring it down. I'm gonna tab into edit mode, delete this out. I'm gonna say available now, tab out of edit mode, and maybe scale this one down a little bit too, maybe something like that. Just gonna zoom out real quick and take a look at it. Okay, so this is pretty much how I want it, but I need some of these to be red. So these middle ones are supposed to be red. So I'm gonna click in there, go to the materials tab. And if you click right here, it'll duplicate it. I'm gonna click there so I can rename it to red and click on this base color and just move this over to a nice red, something like that. I'm gonna click on this one and click this little icon here and switch to red. And I wanna zoom back in. I'm gonna tab into edit mode and then use my uh, arrow keys. I actually didn't mean to do this. I'm gonna delete that and maybe add in one space. So now there's three spaces here. I'm gonna add another element to be the vertical line here. So I'm gonna leave that for now. Tab out of edit mode. Let's zoom out. I'm gonna hold alt, hit A to deselect and see if I'm happy with how this looks. And yeah, I think it's good and we can tweak it as we continue. Okay, and then there's a little element that just for a little flare, I'm gonna add in a hold shift, hit A, go to mesh and cube. It's gonna be really big, so I'm actually gonna zoom out first. I'm gonna hit S for scale, bring it way down, get it to about the, the width I want, zoom back in. I think that's the width I want about. I'm gonna hit S for scale, Z to do it on the Z axis. Just make this much more narrow. G, Z to move it up. It's gonna go here. Zoom in, I'm just gonna middle mouse around real quick. So it's also really huge. We don't need it that big on this axis either. So I'm gonna hit S for scale, Y. Make it a lot thinner, something like this. It's gonna stick to the wall so we can always move it later. Uh, left click, something like that though. And then I'm gonna tab into edit mode. Uh, hold Alt A to deselect everything. Hold Control, hit R. And then I'm just gonna hover my mouse here, left click and left click. So now if I hit my numpad one to go my front view, I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit, hit Z and then wireframe. I'm gonna switch to my vertex select mode, select mode, 
I'm just gonna left click and drag. I guess actually we already have this selected. So um, I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna control Z. I didn't realize with that loop cut it's already selected. If not, you could just go in and select that. And now I'm gonna hit S and X, so scale on the X. And I'm just gonna bring this in something like this. Tab out of edit mode, hold Alt A to deselect, Z and material preview. And let's give this a material. So let's click here and do, I think it's gonna be red, zoom out. And yeah, that's what I'm looking for. And let me left click, make sure I have this selected. I'm gonna bring it in a little bit. I'm gonna hit S, X, make it a little bit smaller on the X, left click. And then we're gonna use the same one down here. So I'm gonna hold shift, hit D, hit enter. R for rotate, 90, hit enter. I'm just hit S for scale, make this a lot smaller. And I'm gonna hit G, bring it to where it's in the middle here. And let's change this red to a blue. I'm gonna hold Alt, hit A to deselect. It's kind of hard to see. Um, maybe I'll actually left click on there and hit S, X, make it a little bit wider, something like that. Again, you can always play with this as we go on. It'll be easier to see once we have our wall, but hold Alt, A to deselect. And yeah, this is looking pretty good. Okay, so let's add in our floor and our wall. So if I hold shift, hit A, hover over mesh and click on plane. I'm actually gonna hit numpad seven to go my top view, scroll out a bit, zoom out. And so this is way too big. I'm gonna hit S for scale, bring it down. I'm gonna need something maybe like this uh, will be pretty good. It's at least a good starting point. And I'm gonna hold shift, hit D to duplicate this, hit enter. I'm just gonna middle mouse around. I'm gonna hit R for rotate, X to do it on the X axis and type in 90 and then hit enter. So if I zoom in here, middle mouse around, you can see my text is sticking out just a teeny bit in all these spots. Um, this is sticking out pretty far. I'm gonna click on it, hit G and Y. I, I only want it to stick out a little bit. I'm not really trying to have these big shadows. I want to be closer to being flat. So. The rest of the letters look pretty good. I'm just middle mousing around and zooming out. So yeah, that's in good position. Now we need to move the can. So I'm just gonna left click on the can. Let's hit numpad seven to go my top view. Uh, I'm even gonna hit Z and wireframe just so I know exactly where this line is. And then I'm gonna hit G. So I want the can to be, so this is where the text ends. I want to be pretty close here. Maybe that's a little close. I'm gonna hit G and move it over. And I want it to be close to the wall so it has these nice shadows on the wall, uh, but just make sure it's not going through it. So G, this would be right up against it. I'm gonna maybe pull it to here. And let's hit the Z, material preview. I'm gonna middle click in with my middle mouse to orbit around. And I'm just gonna start playing with this. So the can looks a little small to me. So I am gonna hit G, X. I am gonna move it in kind of where it overlaps on this S a little bit, start here. And I'm gonna do G, Y to move it towards the camera a little bit. Maybe, I don't wanna go too far from the wall though. I'm gonna hit escape on that. So this is, with my middle mouse around, I'm just gonna make sure, okay, so it's pretty close to the wall here. My middle mouse around closer to our final composition. Actually, you know what, it's, it's gonna be easier when we add the camera in. So let's pause on uh, placing the can until we add, let's start adding in the camera. So I'm gonna hit numpad seven to go to my top view, hold shift, hit A, and go down to camera and click camera. It's hard to see, so I'm gonna hit Z and go to wireframe. It looks like, I'm gonna zoom out. It looks like the camera was put in the wrong position. So let's see, my middle mouse around. Let's see, I think we need to take this Y. Nope, I'm gonna make that Y zero. It's the X that we are gonna click in here and make it 90, hit enter. I'm gonna hit numpad seven to go back down to my top view. Do G and Y to move it on the Y. And while we're at it, let me hit S for scale. Um, it doesn't need to be nearly this big. Zoom out a little bit. And I'm just gonna scale it so it fits. Actually, I'm gonna hit S a little bit. This doesn't change anything other than I'm just seeing better um, what's fitting into the composition and what's not. So the camera's gonna be actually to the left. So I'm gonna hit G and X to move it to the side here, left click. I'm gonna hit R for rotate, so that it rotates back into into about here. 
and I'm paying attention to where these things are fitting, but let's actually jump into the camera. So numpad zero will take us to the camera view. I'm gonna hit Z and click on material preview. And you can see the camera is too low. So in this right panel for a Z location, I'm just gonna click this up until we get everything kind of centered. And yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. We'll go ahead and save. So I'm overall happy with the camera position as angle. There's just like subtle little angle kind of leading towards the cam camera. The two things I don't like is that this text is too large and the can's too small. So I'm gonna left click on the text, I'm gonna hit S for scale, bring this down. It really only needs to be a little bit further past the electrolytes. I think that's gonna be pretty good. I'm gonna left click on the can, hit S for scale. It's gonna bring this up. Let's see, maybe even, I wanted to fill more of the scene. It was just way too small. So maybe something like here will be good. And then let's see. So I wanted the text to kind of go above the can a little bit. So to make life easier for me, I'm gonna left click on this back wall. And if I click the little eye icon, it will go away. I'll click on the floor, hit the eye. And then just so I can get all these really easily, I'm gonna left click and drag and get all of these. Um, be careful not to also get your camera. So I'm just gonna left, left click and drag to get all of these. I'm gonna turn back on the floor and the back wall. I'm gonna hit G and Z. Just move this up a little bit, maybe about so. And then the can, I'm gonna left click on the can, hit S for scale, and just bring it back down a little bit. Maybe something like that is pretty good. Okay, I wanna play with the composition just a little bit more though. So let's click on the camera. And let's see, what's the rotation we want? So this is Z rotation. I'm just gonna move it to where it's more, I kinda, I'm looking at the space between here and the D and the space between here and the can. And I want those to be closer to each other than they were. So maybe something like that, maybe even one less. And if you go under, if you have the camera selected here, it's got a focal length. If we just click this a few times, we're gonna start zooming into our scene and I think that looks pretty good. And let's just keep playing with the composition a little bit more. I think this electric light is too big, so I'm gonna left click on that, hit S for scale, bring this down. I'm actually gonna left click on this one, S for scale, just bring it a little, I'm gonna hit escape, just maybe even just the teeniest bit, bring it like that. And then I kinda wanna just crunch this a little bit. So I'm gonna hit G and Z, I'm gonna bring this down. I didn't like how high this was in the composition, so I'm gonna bring it down to maybe about here, left click on this little guy, G and Z, just to keep the spacing right. And maybe I'm just gonna keep moving things down a bit more. Um, I don't like, I don't want the text to be that high in the composition. Actually, you know what? I take it back a little bit. I don't wanna take it too far. Bring these back up. It's really just playing with it. This is kind of almost more graphic design at this point, just figuring out and just kind of general artistic composition. Um, I think this is looking pretty good though. I like how this is matching up. Maybe actually I'll bring it back up a teeny bit. So the text is a little bit above the can and not like an awkward amount. Um, yeah, I think this is looking good. So I ultimately rendered this out with cycles and you're gonna get the best results with cycles, but you also could do it with Eevee. And while, so the next step is we're gonna add in the kind of little water droplets. And just so we can see what we're doing better, let's set up some of our EV settings so we can see the viewport better. And so let's go into the camera icon. I'm just gonna check on ambient occlusion that you can see that adds in some of those shadows. Uh, I'm gonna check on screen space reflections. And I'm also gonna turn on refraction and turn off half res trace, close that up. And under shadows, I'm just gonna add high bit depth. And yeah, so um, now we're just gonna continue on. We need to turn on this especially so we could see, otherwise you don't see the water droplets correctly if you don't have that enabled. Okay, so now it is time for the water droplet. I'm gonna hold shift, hit A, hover over mesh, click on cube. I'm gonna zoom out here and hit S for scale, bring this down, left click, S for scale, bring it down. Want to be pretty small, and I'm still in my camera view, so I'm actually going to hit uh, numpad one, 
zoom in a little bit, shift middle mouse to pan, I'm gonna hit S for scale, and still bring it down something like so. Just gonna middle mouse around so I can see this object more. And let's actually tab into edit mode. I'm gonna zoom in even closer. I'm gonna hold control, hit R, hover my mouse here, left click and left click. Just gonna middle mouse around and let me hit Z for wire and then click wireframe. I'm gonna left click, shift left click, shift left click, get all of these vertices, hit X and delete vertices. I'm gonna left click, shift left click to get all these. I'm gonna hit F, that's just gonna fill it in and I'm gonna tab out of edit mode. And all that, I'll, the only reason I did that is I got it perfectly flush against this wall and I'm gonna hit Z and solid. So I know exactly this, where it's at on the world origin. And we're going to go to the modifiers, add modifier, subdivision surface. And I'm gonna put it up to two. I'm gonna tab in the edit mode and those are already selected. That's what I wanted. And this mean crease value, I don't want it to be perfectly one, but maybe something like 0.66 will be good. I'm gonna tab out of edit mode. And this is gonna be our droplet. So you could play with this more and change the shape of it. Um, like maybe I'll tab into edit mode, middle mouse around. Maybe I'll left click and shift left click, G, Z, bring those up a bit. Uh, and then maybe S, X, scale X to bring it in, to give it this little bit of a different shape. A tab out of edit mode, right click and do shade smooth. You could you know, change this however you like. Um, I think that's gonna be good for our purposes. Okay, so we have the droplet modeled. Now let's hit Z, go to material preview. I'm gonna zoom in even closer, shift middle mouse click. And let's go to the uh, materials. I'm gonna click new, name this one water. And also while we're at it up here, I'm gonna double click and name it water. So what we wanna do, we're not gonna use a principle this time. I'm gonna use a glass shader and so if you don't know about IOR, it's the index of refraction. And for water, it's 1.33. I'm going to hit enter. And then the roughness, I'm going to do like 0 0.08. So it's going to be almost perfectly reflective. It still doesn't look quite right. We need to go down and change the refraction depth. I'm just going to click that once. And we need screen space refraction. I believe we need subsurface uh, translucency also. Actually, I'm gonna change this um, refraction depth. I'm gonna click in here and do 0 0.01, hit enter. And these settings really kind of more for the viewport because like I said, I'm gonna use cycles. Um, we may tweak some of these later, but this should be at least enough to continue and we can tweak it if things are looking off. Okay, and we're gonna use this for a particle system. And so one thing we, we don't want this, this specific one to show up in our renders. So in the top right here, I'm gonna click the little filter icon and I'm going to add this renders one. So I'm gonna click on that. And when you have that off, it means it won't show up in renders. And I also can just go ahead and hit H to hide it because we don't need to see it. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out. So now I'm gonna left click on our back wall and over in the right panel, there's a particle properties. I'm gonna hit this plus sign to make a new one, and I'm gonna click on hair. And you can see there's a bunch of them. We might not need that many. I'm gonna go to 300, hit enter, and I'm gonna close emission, go to render, and I'm gonna change render as to object. And actually, so not object. Yeah, it is object. And then under the object, instance object, I'm gonna click on that, scroll down and click on water and it's kind of hard to see, but there are a bunch of droplets on the screen. And I'm just gonna take the scale up. And let me just rotate around, I'm middle mousing around. Oh, it looks like it's putting it on the wrong side of the wall. So with the wall still selected, I'm gonna hit R, Z, 180 and hit enter. That just flipped the wall to the other side and middle mouse around. So you can see our droplets now, they're very large. I'm gonna bring the scale down and then the scale randomness will change. It'll randomize, some will be big, some will be small. I'm actually gonna make that pretty large. Maybe I might even click in here and go 0.9 um, to have a huge variation between big and small ones. And the overall scale, you can see like how big the biggest ones will be. 
And so maybe something like that looks pretty good. Go ahead and save. And then back in the particle settings, I'm gonna click uh, global coordinates and object rotation. And you can kind of see if I zoom in here in middle mouse around, you can see they're not actually in the right orientation. So let me turn on my eyedropper and select that water. And then this is gonna be a lot easier to see in solid mode. So I'm gonna hit Z and click on solid. And yeah, you can see really clearly the middle mouse a little bit. You can see there's a really in the wrong um, rotation. Particle systems can be a little weird about uh, the orientation. I do get confused, um, but we're gonna fix this by rotating this single droplet. Okay, so I think what I need to do, I'm gonna hit X, for, or sorry, I'm gonna hit escape, and I'm gonna hit R for rotate, X to do it on the X axis, type in 90 and hit enter. So it's in the correct orientation otherwise, other than it's upside down though. So I'm gonna hit R for rotate, Z 180 and hit enter. And there you go. You can see the thinner part to the thicker part. It's now in the correct orientation. And now I can click this little eyedropper again to hide that water droplet because we don't need it anymore. Go ahead and save. So actually, let me turn this water droplet back on. And actually, why am I not seeing it here? Let's turn it. Oh, it's just underneath here. So I'm orbiting around. I realized I still didn't actually have it right. So it's still not in position. So I'm gonna make sure I left click. You can see it's glowing here. I have it selected. We still need to get this in the right position. I apologize for that. I'm gonna hit R for rotate, Y, 90, hit enter. And let me just really make sure I have it right this time. I'm middle mouse around. Okay, yeah, so it's going small to large and it's actually still touching the wall. Now it's in the correct orientation and we can turn that eyedropper off. So now I'm gonna hit zero to go to my camera view. I'm gonna middle mouse to zoom in. I'm also gonna hit N to close this right panel just so I can really see my scene. I'm gonna hit Z and click material preview. So with Eevee, you're not seeing these droplets too great. Um, you get a little bit of a sense of them, um, but cycles will really help um, should display these the way they really should be. You may actually even go to Z solid because then you can really see the droplets and you can go to your particle settings. If I left click on the wall, it'll bring back up the particle settings. This is where you could go in and you could change the amount. So the number is gonna be how many of these droplets there are and the seeding is gonna change. It will just give you random um, different spots that these are gonna be put in. So play with the amount and the seed until you're, until you're happy with where they are. Um, Something like this may be pretty good. Let me hit Z and go to material preview. I'm gonna hold Alt, hit A to deselect. And yeah, it's kind of nice. I've got some on the letters, some other places. I think I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it. Okay, so I want to now animate the can flying in. So we just need to make sure we have it in the final exact position that we want um, before we start animating. So I'm gonna left click on the can. I'm gonna hit N to bring up my right panel. And real quick, I want to show you, if I click and drag the Z rotation, it's actually rotating around that world origin. So I'm going to actually going to click in there, hit it to zero, hit enter. First, I need to hit F3 so I can search. And I'm going to type in set origin. And I want, uh, let's see, I want origin to geometry. So if I click on that, now if I left click and drag the Z, it's actually spinning in place as it should be. I'm gonna go ahead and click that back to zero. And so yeah, now we just can focus on positioning the can exactly where we want. So I liked how close it was to the wall, but I think it also could come off the wall a little bit. So what if I change the, so the X location was pretty good. What about bringing the Y, bringing it forward a little bit and then back over to the side just to make it a little bit bigger. I think that's probably gonna be a little bit more visually interesting. And so I've got the location where I want it. What about the rotation? So do I want Suzanne kind of looking to the side? Do I want her looking right at the viewer? I think, you know, let me go back to zero real quick. I think that was pretty good, but maybe bring it back. So she's kind of looking a little more this way, something like that. And so now that we have this exactly how I want it, hover over location, hit I, this adds a keyframe, and hover over um, the rotation, hit I, that puts in the keyframe. 
So that actually was at frame one. And we also, so we're gonna actually have it off camera first and then fly in. So we also need to add another keyframe for the ending. So I'm gonna have this animation last 30 seconds. So where it's at uh, frame one, I'm gonna click on in there and click 30, hit enter. And I'm actually gonna hit hover over uh, the rotation hit I, hover over the location hit I, because this is actually the ending position. So we want, that's perfect. We now need to actually drag back and go back to frame one. And I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit. And I want to change the, what is it, the X location? Yes, yeah, so I want, I want the uh, can to be over here. Let's click in here, maybe even 0.4, hit enter. Uh, maybe even like 0.45, hit enter. And I'm just gonna hit I to make sure it's got that keyframe. And then our overall length of our animation is way too long. I'm gonna click it in here and go to 60. So then the camera, uh, sorry, the can will animate in and then just hold. So if I hit spacebar, we can see it fly in and it's just gonna hold, fly in and hold. And I like the speed of that. I like the distance. You can adjust, if I'm gonna hit spacebar, you could go back to frame one, which you can click this to go back to the frame one. You could adjust this X uh, value to have it either come in faster or slower, depending on how far away it is. But I'm happy with that. And the other thing I wanna do, I want to spin in. So if I go, you can go from keyframe to keyframe by clicking on this. So this will go to this keyframe. You can see our Z rotation is at 2.7. If I jump to the front one, it's still 2.7. So I'm gonna click in here and I'm gonna make this, I think I'm gonna make it negative 270, hit enter and then hit I to lock that in. And now if I hit spacebar, you see it's spinning in. So it's spinning in. I'm just watching to see if I like the amount of spin. I'm looking to see if I like the overall speed. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna hit spacebar to stop it. And yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, so that's it for the can animation. Uh, we haven't actually added material for the floor or back wall. So I'm gonna left click on the uh, floor, go to materials, click new, just name this floor. I'm gonna click in here, make it, I think I'm gonna make it like not perfectly white, but really close. I'm gonna take the roughness really far down. So it's gonna be really reflective. Uh, it's pretty subtle, but it's, it's reflective down there. And that's good for that. I'm gonna left click on the back wall, click new, name it wall. This one, I'm gonna bring it to be a little gray. I don't want it to be very gray, but something to have a little bit of offset from the bottom. Maybe something like there will be good. Okay, and we also haven't done the lighting yet. So I'm gonna click on this little world tab. Um, like I said, this dot used to be on the other side, but starting at Blender 2.9 is here. Click on that. Click on environment texture. Click on open go into your assets and click on this artist workstation, double click on it. Now if I hit Z and go to rendered, you can see that's now in our scene. It just will add some more unique um, reflections into our scene and some lighting. And then we also want to add in a uh, an actual other light source. I'm gonna hold shift, hit A, go to light and go to area. So now we just need to position it. So I'm gonna hit numpad seven to go to my top view, zoom out. I'm gonna hit G to move it over, hit uh, numpad one, hit G to bring it up, hit R for rotate, go to numpad three, see what it is in this view, R for rotate, hit G to move it over, let's go back to the top view. All right, so that's pretty good. Let me hit zero to go my numpad view. So it's hitting at an angle I like, I think. Um, you can play with it to see, uh, you know, get the exact angle you want. If you go into this little, um, light bulb. I'm gonna actually make this 2000, I think, hit enter. So, okay, it's really blown out and bright. That's not what I wanted, maybe just 200. So even that is still incredibly bright. Make it 100. And we're still in Eevee, and we're gonna need to see this in cycles before we know the exact setting we should have it at. So this still looks really bright. I'm going down to 50. That's probably something closer to being right. Um, but like I said, we're still in Eevee and I want to go to cycles before we um, decide what value this should be exactly. And one more thing, uh, this back wall, I'm gonna click on it. I forgot, I'm gonna go into the materials. 
I want it to be kind of reflective too. So I'm gonna pull this down, maybe it's like 0.15 or even lower, something like that. Um, but let's actually click back on this area light and see how it looks in cycles. So I'm gonna hit Z and so I, Z render, I'm in rendered, but I need to go back to the camera icon and change EV to cycles. And let's just see how this is looking. And yeah, I actually think that's probably a pretty good value there. Um, I am seeing some real reflective stuff in these droplets, but we won't really know until I do a real render. So I'm gonna hit Z and go to material preview. And um, I don't want this to be too in depth about rendering, um, but I wanna do a test render. So I'm gonna drop this, I'm gonna go into the printer icon, drop this down to 50. This is just gonna speed things up a lot. And if you have a bad computer, your final render, you could even do 50, maybe even 25 um, if your computer really struggles. But so this is a test render, I'm gonna put down the 50. And now in Blender 2.9, there's a lot of denoising options. And so I'm gonna click render. I really like this open image denoise. If you have uh, the right kind of graphics card, you have an NVIDIA version you can choose. But for me, this is gonna work and I'm just gonna test, do a test render. So I'm just gonna go to render, render image, and we'll come back once this is finished. So this is my test render. And if I zoom in here, I'm seeing the reflections in these water droplets way too clearly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close this and play with this value a little bit. So I'm gonna zoom in on one of these very closely. So let me zoom in here. Maybe I can get two of them in one shot. And I'm actually gonna turn on this viewport denoising also. So if I hit Z and go to rendered, I'm now going to see uh, these water droplets. And yeah, they're really reflective. So if I left click on the water droplet in the outliner over here and go to the materials properties, let's change this roughness value maybe to like 0.3, hit enter, and let it update. Maybe I took it too far. Um, actually, maybe that's good. So I think I'm ready now to do another test render. I'm gonna do Z material preview just to let my computer relax for a second. And then I'm just gonna do render image and I'll come back when it's done. And I think it's still not enough. I'm still seeing, if I zoom in here, I'm still seeing pretty clearly. So let's just even change this roughness. Maybe, so what? what is the value? So one would be not at all 0.4. Maybe go up to 0.4 and I'm gonna do another test render. Okay, so I'm happy with that. It looks a little better where I just can't see exactly the reflection perfectly. Go ahead and close that. The last thing is I'm gonna zoom out here I also want to add some motion blur. So when this cam or when this can's flying in, so something about here, I want to see motion blur. I'm gonna hit N to close that right panel, shift middle mouse to see my scene better. If I go back to the camera icon and let's see, I'm gonna close this up, go to motion blur, open that up. Uh, the lower this value, the less motion blur there is, the higher the more there is. I'm gonna try one out and do a test render. I'm also gonna go ahead and turn this resolution back up to 100, and I'm gonna render this out. Okay, and you can see that there, it's not sharp and clear here, It's it's got this motion blur, and so that's gonna really help sell uh, the animation and the realism. So you can change that uh, shutter value for more or less, but I think I'm pretty happy with this, so I'm just ready to set things up to actually be rendered out. So, I am gonna to go to the camera icon. I actually did put this back to 50, so I'm gonna go back up to 100. And this is where I'm gonna leave it up to you. You need to play with um, the different denoising options, the amount of samples, and the resolution. You know, play with all of those and do test renders to see how long it will take your computer to render these things out. So I'll leave it up to you. Do test renders, see how long it is. Know that you then have to do it for 60 frames and get the settings that are right for you. So I'm gonna leave that part to you, but we do need to go to the printer icon again and set our output location. So if you click the folder, I'm gonna to go to uh, my project files, go into the render folder. I'm gonna add one called animation, enter into it, name this pop animation, whatever you wanna name it, hit enter. 
So we have the location, and now you just go to render, render animation, and you're done. I also want to note for you that you can save yourself some render time. You can see here, I've actually changed the start and end to only be from frame 16 to 30. And that's because if I go before here, the can's not actually in frame. So we can just actually use this frame 16 and hold it um, when we actually put together our final animation. And same with this frame 30. Rather than going all the way to 60, I'm just going to have this single uh, picture just be held still for a couple seconds and we'll still have the same effect and that saves us a lot of rendering time. And one other thing is that under the render properties, if you go down to film, actually it's not film, uh, color management, scroll down, you can change the look to high contrast or even very high contrast and that will just punch up the colors in your scene. I think I'm probably gonna go with high contrast and then you're definitely ready to go ahead and render out your animation. All right, and that's it. I hope that you had fun doing this tutorial. And if you did, please consider supporting me anyway by even just liking, uh, leaving a comment also really does encourage me. And if you can support me monetarily, you know, that'd be the real MVP. All right, have a good day.